just like that, y'all, and that's a fact, y'all. Hey, we back in this bitch again. Slime's broke ass, low budget show. Today, I gotta bring y'all the award winning and best selling author of the classical works such as By Ism, By Ism Means Necessary, Eternal Sunshine of the Pimpin' Mind, The Fellowship of the Ism, and I Know Who You Pimp Last Summer. Motherfucking Chicago legend from the South Side. Make some noise for GLC. <coughs> the ism in the motherfucking building. Man, it's so good to be here, man. I walked into this place. I felt like I was in a Mactastic environment, man. Super nice. Southside in this motherfucker. Where you from? Man, I'm from 87, man. Southside of Chicago. From I was born in Inglewood, and uh, I grew up in the Arvin Gresham area. I moved uh, to the West Inglewood area. Then I moved to the east side, then a further east side, then a further east side. He was all over. Yeah, I've been moving around the city. The Hunnets, I live a few different places. That's where I'm from, from the Hunnets. What, what about? I'm the 15th and the Oh, you right there. What high school you go to? I went to Simeon, man. True. Hell yeah, I was there. True. Did you hoop and shit? You know what? Man, I had a shit confused a little bit because I felt like if I was gonna hoop in high school, I would probably have to make a choice between my Mackin endeavors uh, or being completely dedicated to the game. I got footage on the internet, on my Instagram, where I'm just like exercising my, my G in the L on them too. We're gonna have to cut that in here. There it is. I'm dunking on motherfuckers and shit. They ain't wanna film none of the dunk, dunking because that was gonna make them feel real sad and bad and probably make their lady rate go down a whole lot more. Because they had them Uncle Rico stories, you know, about how cold they was and this and that. And here goes some footage from about a decade ago where I was just flying through the air, living without a cow. Now, was you rapping and shit back in high school? Man, yeah, I started rapping because when I was in grammar school, I was looking at the rappers, right? And I was like, damn, the rappers got gold chains. <laughs> they got cars, they got cool haircuts. And it don't look like they getting up, having to go to work for nobody. It was like, damn, these dudes are in control of their own move. So I kind of gravitated to that. Yeah, so I had gotten a little talent show, and I won. So when I won, man, at lunchtime, G, chocolate milk game was on at an all-time high. They was bringing me all the chocolate milks. Sometimes they'd bring me Skittles, a little extra. Everybody just wanted to bring me treats and treat me so nice because, you know, I had to begin to become sought after a little bit. When in talent shows, I was a little handsome. I had the extra greased forehead because my mama used to put that Vaseline on my forehead <laughs> in the wintertime. You know what I'm saying? And I was ready, and I was getting chose. That was before, before porno was digital and shit. Man, I tell you, <laughs> yeah. Because, see, look, this is how it was, G. My brothers and my older family members, they had their little porn stash. And I was a little magazines kid. Magazines and shit. They had magazines, they had videotapes, VCR tapes, you know what I'm saying? And I hit their stash. I was a little kid hitting their stash. And I got exposed to the female anatomy at a very young age. Man, it was just a wonderful time. Very hey, wonderful everybody time. Everybody love titties, every human being on earth. Because when you born, that's your first and only nourishment. Like, that's what we all supposed to survive on. Man, I think, the tea, so. I think they make a difference, man. I think they make a difference for people, you know? I think the woman is the closest thing that we got to God on the planet, man. Cause a life can come out of that woman. Shit. And then also, and, feed it, raise it. and then they can feed it and raise it and do Love so it. much cool shit. Free the nipple. Yeah, and if they got them, Embrace them, treat them real nice. Talk about them whenever. Just tell her like, hey baby, I just want to tell you that they looking real nice today. You look really good. I'm so proud of them, you know, and show them some love. You play video games and shit? I play 2K. 
You used to play video games growing up, Sega and shit? I did, man. I was a video game fanatic. I was... Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis? Man, I was really into that, man. I played the video games, and what was so cool was I had the consoles, and the girls, they would like to play Sonic. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they like to play Super Mario Brothers. So I had it. Yeah, I definitely want to see a game that got on there doing this thing real, real strong. That nigga came to a show one time. I was in Vegas, I think. He had like 30, 40 girls. It was crazy. I ain't never seen no shit like that. I actually, that was my first tour. Yeah. I met you on that motherfucker. You probably don't remember. We was in Chicago. It was the Smokers Club tour, Red Man and Method Man, and Mick Jenkins, and Be Real. And we was backstage. Debbie the Glass Lady was there. Shit. I had Damn on a cool. towel coat, a motherfucking Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle towel coat. Debbie the Glass Lady was there with her afro, yep. her gl glamorous she was glasses. Free my man Wise P, straight P out of the NYC. Pimpin' ain't no illusion, but it can often cause confusion. He was there, and it was a beautiful time. I do remember, man. I believe it was at the Congress Theater on Milwaukee, I believe it was. I think it was at Concord. Concord. What does GLC stand for? How'd you come up with your name? All right, so I grew up on 87 in an area called Georgetown in the city. That's what it was called back then. And uh, we was a street organization over there. The street organization was the GDs, Growth and Development. And uh, as a kid, you know what I'm saying, I embraced the concept. I embraced the laws and the policies and the teachings of the honorable chairman because I saw things in that literature that said, we are reckoning in power of people bound by no means beyond measures. And when I saw that, I was like, wow, that sounds like some empowering shit. My mama named me Leonard. And then G, that's like gangster cuz, or you know, when you part of the organization, they'd be like something G or G somebody or this and that. So they called me GL, you know what I'm saying? And then a C. At the time, I was a rapper. I was, you know, trying to do my rap thing. So they just combined my names. They called me Gangsta L in the mob, and then my rap name was Crisis. So they put it all together. I became the Gangsta L Crisis, you know what I'm saying? And then as I evolved, that L became legendary because shit, for the things that I've survived in the midst of growing up in Chicago, as well as the things that I've accomplished in my lifetime, uh, I'm often considered, you know, by the people that are aware, they be like, man, that's some legendary shit. It kind of stuck with me. So I became a gangster legendary crisis. I was born, then eight months later, my daddy died, then I was 12, then my mama died. Then at 14, I had got diabetes. And guess what? I had died, G. I had, they had put me on a, a resuscitated me through the um, through the little machine. Yeah. But I was resurrected, you know what I'm saying? And I give power to the most high, the creator, God, the absolute. Because I know a lot of times those machines, they don't work. So yeah. it worked for me, so I'm here. So I've been through a lot. And then when you look at stuff like that, you be like, man, that's a crisis. So I'm showing you that you can go through that, but with life, you can still grow and develop and evolve and still become something great, you know? You got the option to become a product of your environment or a product of your struggle or make all that be a product of you. you know? And that's what I chose to do. So now that, I, you know, I'm older and I survived a lot of the street shit and I seen where it led a lot of people, I do everything I can to be like a beacon of light, lead people to the light as opposed to the darkness. So. Right now, the way I be feeling, GLC, gotta love Chicago, man. You gotta love, you gotta love Chicago. We gotta love each other, there it is. I know you was probably already a fan of uh, Rockefeller and shit. Yeah. So what was it like to be dropping your first tape uh, hosted by Dame Dash and shit? Gee, that shit was unbelievable because I used to see Dame Dash in the videos doing his dances having his liquor, like squirting it, like pause, you know, like letting the liquor, the champagne, and he'll just do that on anybody, you know what I'm saying? I was yeah. like, damn, that's busting. He like, getting yeah, in. I'm like, damn. So I was like, 
man, it look like this dude is getting his own money. He a boss, and he like is at the forefront of the culture. So for me to meet Dame and for him to embrace my concept like that, bro, that shit was rewarding. It was unbelievable because it's not something that he had to do. Right. It's something that he chose to do. And we still got an amazing friendship to this day. You know what I'm saying? A mentor, a leader. For real. There it is. Go get us. When did you, when did that start? Go get us. Man, I was in the 90s, bro. Back when I was like 70, we was like old as hell. We had just got out the nursing home. <laughs> and we was like, look, G, we need to start a rap group. We got that name from John Monopoly. And he was our manager at the time. And uh, he was like, man, you getting money, you getting money, you doing this, you doing that. Man, y'all some go-getters. It was like, damn, you right. And that became the name of the group. Um, it consisted of myself, my man Aerostar, my man Timmy G, and Kanye. And then we had a crew, Go Get Us as well, which was really dope. Uh, Con Man Entertainment, Mickey Halstead. Yeah, I was say Mickey. Uh, we had Ryan Fest, uh, Shayla G, Christina, uh, Twine Guys, and Tifa, and Shauna, they all used to be around, Cap One. It was a lot of us, man. This, Man, I'm, I can't even remember everybody, man, but... Just back in the day, so many cold-ass rappers from yeah. Chicago in that era, like, niggas always act like it's some new shit or something, or... Yeah. You feel me? If you're not from here, you might not know about the extensive motherfucking history. We always had cold-ass rappers and a lot of... You feel me? We, we like, always did. We had a lot of really dope rappers. The thing was, though, uh, we, we didn't have the outlet. Right. for everybody like right now I love today's uh, social media digital the modern age how if you dope and you got like friends and people that believe that you dope man they gonna post your music people gonna catch on they gonna see it now you got a direct avenue to the fan or to the listener as opposed to having to go through a, like a system in order to get to the listener. Right. If you dope and you singing on, and you believe you dope, sing on your Instagram, people gonna hear you. Right. And if you're not dope, you gonna know that you're not dope because the people gonna <laughs> tell you, you know what I'm saying? Or they just not gonna say nothing at all. Man, see, this is the thing. When you trying to get to it, all you, all you dreaming of, you sitting back and you like, man, one day I wanna have me a cool ass desk with some bad fire on it. You know what I'm saying? Oh, this pussy like, fur. Like, this, this pussy vintage. fur? This vintage, vintage pussy fur? Like, when I came it's here... one of my homies' mamas. I ain't gonna say which one, but this is, this is his mama pussy fur. Damn. Saving it for about 40, 50, 60 years. So right? this is a lifetime supply of pussy fur? Yeah, vintage. Damn, they snot with that shit. Sit all up in here, little weed crumbs and shit. So do you, like, put condition on it? Like, how you get it to, like, spike up and, like, uh, chill like that? I don't do like the cleaning, that. you feel me? That ain't, that ain't my job. This should be in a museum because it's just cool. People don't get to see this every day. You think people, like, you know, they want to be in relief of their pubic hairs or, you know, they soul patch, whatever they got going on. This man took the time out to get up with one of his homeboys, mamas, to get her lifetime supply of this. You know what I'm saying? Is this armpit hair too? Nah. Okay, well, man, see, this is what dreams are made of. This goes to show that. Everything that is starts with a belief, a thought, or an idea, because whoever thought this could happen? I'm sitting back chilling. Look, I'm gonna rub it. I'm rubbing it. Normally, if I see this, luck. normally if I see this, I go the other way, man. So, Kendrick Lamar shit, section 80. How you get on that motherfucker? Man, that shit happened like this. Look, I was at the crib. You be popping up on everybody's shit, bro. I be like, hey. <laughs> I was chilling like a motherfucker, man. <laughs> man, I was in, where I was at? I was in an Avalon community on the south side, chilling like a motherfucker. And then I get a call from my man. My man, he popping like a motherfucker right now, too. His name, DJ the Chicago Kid. Okay. He like singing his ass off real soulful. He opened up for B.O. here in Chicago. One of my favorite singers, just pure soulful guy. He was in the studio on the West Coast, and he called me with a lot of energy. He was like, yeah, what up, bro? What up, big bro? I say, what up, what up, BJ? He say, man, I'm in the studio with Kendrick Lamar, man. He talking about you one of his favorite rappers. 
at that time, I'm chilling like a motherfucker because when I heard Kendrick Lamar, I thought it was like a blues singer or something. I did not know because the name sound like, you know, like a classy type jazz yeah, musician yeah, yeah. or some shit like Kendrick Lamar. So he sent me some links and I heard his music and I was like, damn G, shawty got something, he, he got something special. It was real soothing to my ears and yeah. it was refreshing. So I told BJ to give him my line, he gave him my line and we got on the phone. He told me about his mother and his father and his uncles, how they all was GDs from Chicago, from mm. the Hunters. Mm. And they moved out to Cali in the 80s due to the gang thing that was going on here. But then they moved to Cali, which gang shit was going on too, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. But uh, he was like, they had a lot of respect for me. And they like introduced them to like who I was. And he listened and he was moved by it. So then he was like, man, it would be an honor to have you on my album. So he sent me a record. I listened to it. I liked it. I elevated my mind a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, it was like player style. Way more player than that. That shit was a blessing, man, you know? And I only spoke from experience when I said, apply yourself to supply your wealth. And the only limitations you'll ever have in life are those that you place upon yourself. Exercise your ism and don't depend on no one else. You know what I'm saying? I was talking at five Ps. Proper preparation prevents poor performance. Believe that. Ism. Hey, I got drunk as hell last night. You did? I was hung over that motherfucker this morning. <laughs> Throwing up, I threw up and shit outside. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> Got you drunk. Make sure you get the hoodie, get the hoodie. How you come up with um tater chip? Cause my homie Piff, rest in peace, we used to play that shit all the time. Like, oh man, dying laughing, G. Like, we used to be prank calling motherfuckers. Like Tater Chip. Yeah, like we was Tater Chip oh, and shit. Oh shit! Like, I had a buddy who Tater Chip like really looked like he was like one of my best friends. Kind of looked like him. So what I would do, like aside from roasting mugs, I'd be I draw them too. So I just had everybody <laughs> just super laughing at him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And with that being said, when I used to work at the lock in the clothing store, when I was in the mall at 12, when my schedule had said nine and shit, sometimes the customers would come in and they'd be looking kind of like entertaining. So I'd draw their ass, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'd take the tag off the back of a Jabot jean and just draw a motherfucker real fast. And, and then, like Disney movies, I looked at like The Lion King and I saw that with like uh, an adult woman, like we grown watching The Lion King recently. And I'm looking at the effect that this cartoon is just having on it. Like, you don't even gotta do a whole lot of macking when you watch really nice cartoons. So I was like, man, why do I gotta go to Disney for the source of this? I could be the source of this. Who your top five players of all time? Top five players? Yeah. Man, I gotta shout out my player partner, D-Ray, man. D-Ray player. His, his, D-Ray from Chicago, he a comedian, he traveled I was all over the world. <laughs> oh man, this dude, he has I seen done. this nigga at the casino, he was getting that shit. This hey bro, on the craps. I gotta shout out D-Ray, man, cause he's done some dynamic things in the field of the player hood, you know what I'm saying? I don't wanna like, you know, just put it out there like that, yeah, but I just wanna say I'll take a drink to, uh, <laughs> you know, a toast to D-Ray's playerism, cause it's top notch, you know, it made me real proud. If we gonna salute, the pimping and the players, you know what I'm saying? I could throw them both in there and say like top of all time, you know what I'm saying? But there's many. It was like PTD. PTD used to live around the corner from me, right? He was a boss player, you know? He had gray eyes, you know? He was a ponytail player. He had the ponytail beard where it was like rubber band ponytail in the front. Kind of like Captain Lou Albino from WWF, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but more like player style. Then he had a ponytail in the back, right? 
And he had butters. His butters was like silky smooth. He used to get his hair ponytailed out, get his beard braided real ponytailed out. And then he'd be working on cars and serenading the women in the alley at the same time. <laughs> he was an alley mechanic with dress shoes on and a dress shirt. He'd slide up under the cars and he wouldn't get no stains on his shirts, <laughs> no stains on his ties. And his dress shoes would still be pat leather shining. And you would be sitting up here like, how's this man doing this? How's he getting up under these cars, doing this, fixing the cars, getting up, serenading the women with the singing style and getting his hair braided at the same time? This man was so cold, he had two, two uh, baby mamas, two sons, and him. And at one point, they all lived in the same house. Players of all time. My cousin Liddell, rep, may he rest in peace. His playerism was so precise. He, you know what I'm saying, in the early 90s, he got caught up in a move, you know, where it led to him getting paralyzed, you know what I'm saying? Oh, shit. May he rest in peace, because he was a dynamic man. This man was paralyzed in the wheelchair, waist down. And while he was in rehab, you know, learning how to use the chair and just use his upper body, he met a nurse there named Kathy. The man was in a wheelchair, met this nurse. They started a union together. He was living really nice out in the suburbs, traveling all over the world with the nurse that he met down, who became his lady. Now, it was all going really nice and swell, but then somebody infiltrated on his pimping structure and told on him. And he got caught up because he was doing some sideline macking and somebody told on him and they formed a coalition against his pimping and it all ended. But when I saw it, I was completely mesmerized by it. I was intrigued by it. And I was like, that's a beautiful life. You know what I'm saying? That's a beautiful life to come from the wheelchair and being lonely and feeling like your pimping finna come to an end. But then your playerism evolved because you got in the presence of a nurse and you gave her them vibrations to start a sensation. You know what I'm saying? Really? That was beautiful, man. Rest in peace to Liddell. That's my cousin, man. Another player of all time, of course, is the late, great Hugh Hefner. You know what I'm saying? You can't not speak of the playerism or mention the playerism and not mention somebody that's so great and so divine when it comes to that calling, you know what I'm saying? Somebody that was able to organize and bring beautiful women together for a greater cause. Because there's people in jail, man, that might never be coming home. And then there's people out here that's complete lames, that ain't got no game, that don't even know how to exercise no macking ability to no woman because they never had no strong macking structure within a household that they ever could witness to absorb. So they out here completely lame to the game. So when it comes to Hugh Hefner, what he did, he helped a lot of players get through their bids, and he helped a lot of players get through being on droughts, and he also helped a lot of players win arm wrestling contests from having strong wrists. I gotta say, of course, Madison and Pulaski, man. The, the home of the land, the land of the great Bishop Don Juan, the land of the great pimp god. The late, the land of the great cold heart, you know what I'm saying? It's some straight pimping that take place in the west side of Chicago. The, the great shorty rich from the wild hunters. His pimping game was so extreme. He won player of the year in 99, I think 2002, if I'm not getting it confused, you know what I'm saying? The great cowboy, man, free cowboy. Cowboy locked up right now, man. They say he was taking scriptures out the Bible and remixing it a little bit. So, you know, it would be like, the Lord said and this and that. He switched it up to Cowboy said, ooh, ooh. And they say that his merch was going ahead and getting these holy scriptures tattooed on them. Damn. And that's what led to his demise. Man, Jesus Christ, Mary Magdalene, she was prostituting. Now, if she was prostituting, how'd she end up in that Last Supper picture? Y'all telling me that the man that was going around turning wine, water into wine, making bread, making manna fall out the sky. You know, one thing, one of the best ways to a woman heart that everybody know is food, is cooking. That's not just to the woman heart, but to anybody heart. Jesus is just making bread come. He just making water into wine. You know, that's gonna make you have a good time. 
and you want to say he ain't had no girls. Amen. I don't believe that. I think his pimping wasn't no illusion. But if it was brought out to the forefront, it could often cause confusion. Is Hell yeah. Pimpin ain't dead, just moved to the website. That's what Pimp C said, you feel me? Man, he broke that and shit he down. He brought up feet, and it reminded me that it's a lot of money out here to be made off of feet. Oh, it's absolutely. A lot of people, I ain't even gonna call them weird, because I be on that too sometimes, but not like these niggas. It's a lot of old white people with money. What know, they be doing? On weird shit. They want, they'll pay you hella money. I, I ain't never did that. They pay you money to see a picture of your feet. Oh, I know, girls, I know some girls that was cashing out off that. Man, see, that's God, man. Like, that's like Jesus, like God. It's like how, how you could just make things out of thin air. Now we that's live We live in a world where you can make money out of thin air. You can, you can make money off shit that people can't even touch. Man, see, I'm real big on the whole anti-toe jam act, you know? Like, if you come around me and you talking about your feet and this and that, but if I see like a little trace of toe jam. You can't come around me. Players, y'all gotta understand this. A lot of y'all breath really be on 10, G. Like, I'm out kicking it, having a nice time. You coming up to me, I'm standing next to a beautiful woman, and you trying to have a conversation with me, and you on this side of me, and she on this side of me, and she just seeing us talking, but your breath is projected towards where she at. She could think that's my breath. If your presentation looking real nice, you just went and got a haircut, your lick just went through, you just hit Michigan Avenue, you know, you went and you just hit the Gold Coast up, man, that breath could just shut everything down, man, because don't nobody want to be around that. So fix your breath, take the time out for that. So I got to ask you the classic show question I ask everybody. Harold's or Uncle Raymond? Not from out south, bro. You gotta be Harold's. That's all I know. Yeah, that's what I grew up on. Harold's played a part in raising me and shit. Even though you're vegan now, right? Yeah, I switched it up. But I can't never forget where I came from. But what about Popeyes? I feel like Popeyes, we always overlook. I, I used to like them biscuits, boy. They was, that was a whole nother lifestyle. I got some biscuits right here. Oh, he did what he was supposed to do. <laughs> and I got some chicken. I told you I was hung over. It's only one kill for that. <laughs> take your ass to Popeye's, man. Man, first it was church, then church got on the move, man. I'm just sitting here eating this ism cake, man. The ism cake? Yeah, I can't stop eating it. Oh, these. shit, fuck this chicken. I should have bought enough for y'all, for everybody, man. I ain't know. Fuck this Popeye's. I should have asked. Damn, I'm sorry. I'm finna get on my healthy shit. I'm finna get on my vegan shit. My tasty shit. It's fairly decent, I hope, man. Let me try this ism cake. Only thing is, when you eat these motherfuckers, you can't stop eating them. That's some munchy shit for real, huh? Yeah. Damn. This shit good as hell, G. <laughs> you made this shit yourself? Yeah, man. You made the rest, you made this cake yourself? I made it myself, man. I sprinkle a little ism on it. Pause. Yeah, we on the verge right now. We at Lighthouse Grill at High Park. And we're at Forever Yogurt in Bronzeville. Lighthouse is on 55th and Lake Park. And then Forever Yogurt is on 35th and Dearborn. Ism cakes, they good for you too, boy. Ism. What would you do if you was in a strip club and Shorty farted? If she farted? Because it'd be happening. Well, see, it's the thing. You got to understand this technique. It's a way to not smell a fart. See, people smell farts only because that's something that they desire to do. The moment I get any type of whiff of any type of smell that I don't like, I start inhaling through my mouth and exhaling through my nose, and then I don't ever smell it no more. So I don't have I to smell it. Even. Yeah. I feel like I'll fuck around taste it. Them, stri them strippers, <laughs> farts is some hot, nasty farts. It be hot, musty in that motherfucker. Damn. Them shit is strong. If you start inhaling through your mouth, you gonna fuck around taste that motherfucker. It's nasty. It's Reaper Cletus, bitch, legendary play, AKA Freak over Barge, AKA I don't even motherfucking know, but y'all bitches be stankin'. This is something all the players out there might be able to understand. You ever been in a strip club, getting you a lap dance from Big Booty Bitch, and all of a sudden you smell a, a stench most foul from a decrepit booty crack? I got the perfect thing for you. 
Doodle Blaster 7000. You ain't got to run about the club no more, player. You ain't got to smell that shit no more. You ain't got to taste it in your mouth. Just blow that motherfucker away. Or switch to this set and you can suck that motherfucker up. Save it for later if you one of them freaky motherfuckers. Doodle Blaster. Holla at your boy. Back to the future on y'all bitches. I know the strippers got techniques to make <laughs> other parts fight, other body fight a little bit. So you know how in grammar school, I don't know if this was still <laughs> going on, the guys would do the move where they put their arm under their armpit and do this to yeah, make yeah. a fight sound. I seen this. I seen a stripper doing that as part of her technique. She was upside down making a fight sound. I didn't know what the hell was going on. I what? think I think she was on full tweak mode. So it just all depends, man. I was on the floor. I just can't take it no more. Gotta get off the floor. 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 These streets ain't no hope, bitch, I'm trying to grow. They do not want me to grow. Quit selling crack, it was burning my soul. I hit show yay, when he came home. He said, God damn, that shit's wrong. Strong like ammonia, cold like pneumonia. Motherfuck bows is my favorite aroma. I felt alone, plus I felt strong. 2001, bitch, they burned down my home, the bitter. I had my work in the ceiling. I wasn't just moving zones. Money burned up. I called my blood, cause I did not pay it all off. He gave me a pass, told me to keep what I had. I took off running and blazing my path. Can't take it no more. Gotta get off the flow. I was on the flow. Can't take it no more. Gotta get off the flow. I was on the flow. Can't take it no more. Gotta get off the flow. I was on the flow. Can't take it no more. Yeah. I got up with Lloyd, he was cooking a slab. That wasn't me, boy, I had to deny. I seen the things, losing my homies as teens. I felt the pain, I smelled that green. He gave it to me to help me get out my dreams on my auntie block. I met him through Charlie who worked at the lot. He fronted me 10, so how could I stop? I'm on the floor trying to get to the top. Working the job wasn't paying me a lot. Wasn't no Uber or Lyft. I took the risk. Had to compete for the championship. My bitch wanted bags, my bitch wanted trips. And she had that ass. I couldn't resist. Flow, can't take it no more. Gotta get off the flow, I was on the flow, can't take it no more. Gotta get off the flow, I was on the flow, can't take it no more. Gotta get off the flow, I was on the flow, can't take it no more. Yeah. Oh. Streets ain't no hoe, can't get off the flow, can't take it no more. Gotta get off the flow. Name GLC, the Ism Blood. It's like that, y'all, and that's a fact, y'all. This strong, man. I'm proud of y'all for that. Is it? Damn. <laughs>